Nicole Scott here from Mobile Geeks, and today we're going to be reviewing the Gioni eLife S5.5, which is currently the thinnest smartphone on the market. At 5.5 millimeters thin, is it just too thin? The Gioni eLife S5.5 claims to be the world's thinnest smartphone at only 5.55 millimeters thick. It sports a 5 inch Super AMOLED display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. Under the hood, it comes with a 1.7 GHz MediaTek OctaCore processor with 2 GB of RAM and 16 GB of storage with no micro SD card slot for expansion. On the rear, we have a 13 megapixel shooter accompanied by a 5 megapixel selfie cam on the front. The thin frame even supports a 2300 mAh battery while weighing only 133 grams. So design-wise, we have one of the most stunning phones that's currently on the market. It, and it's not Ponzi feeling at all. When you have it in your hand and you really give it a squeeze, it doesn't feel like it's going to move at all. And when you kind of bend it in opposite directions, I really feel like it's a really well-made, really well-made phone. The aluminum rim just is so well-made when it comes together with the, with the kind of polycarbonate plastic at the back. And I like how they've kind of reduced the thinness to 5.5 millimeters, but when you kind of look at the camera, the optical sensor, you can't really shrink that. Well, not, not just yet if you want decent photos. So there is a little bit of a raise there, but even that looks quite well made and quite kind of, yeah, it still looks quite sexy. So here we have the Gioni eLife S5.5, and this is a Sony Xperia Z2. So there, there is a difference in the screen size. The Gioni is 5 inches versus 5.2 on the Z2. They're both 1080p, but this is AMOLED and this is IPS LCD. If we kind of take a look at the viewing angles, you can see that the Sony just comes out, oh, maybe not, the Gioni there. Slightly better on the viewing angles from the sides. So what we have here is a super AMOLED display. It's 1080p. I think the color saturation and color gambit is quite good. When we look at something like this, you can see that there's, you know, a good detail on the screen. The colors and greens appear to be very green, and the black is pretty black. Um, just out of experience, I could, I could, it could be a little bit blacker. But when you kind of zoom in, everything does look very crisp, very cool. And when you check the viewing angles on something like this on outdoors, we do have full brightness on right now. And it's not too, too bad. When we put it up against the Z2 in terms of uh, viewing angles indoor, it, didn't, it actually stood up quite well. So the display, I give it quite a good rating. On the rear, we have a 13 megapixel shooter that doesn't have that many options. So we have HDR, auto scene, so it can auto detect what's going on, geotagging, we can have a sound, uh, capture mode, so you, you, can, you can have it set to you know, a peace sign, or you can touch to shoot, or it can shoot upon smile, which is pretty cool. We have picture size, so you can shoot all the way down to four megapixels. Uh, the volume key to shoot or zoom, which is nice to have a physical key button if you really like uh, taking photos, and then even auto banding for video, so you can choose 50 or 60 uh, hertz shooting. But what, you know, and I was a little disappointed that uh, there wasn't that many options here, even though this does come with a pretty sweet 5 megapixel front facing camera. But what I did discover is it has an additional app, the Charm Cam. Oh, the Charm Cam. So this is where you can put additional stamps onto it. It can be like a taking, a, this is for taking presentations of whiteboards. This you can kind of track, track a moving object. Here's face beauty, so you can beautify your face, different degrees of awesome. Makeup is a little creepy. I'm not really sure who would think that adding these great makeup jobs is a good idea. Best face takes multiple shots, so you can choose the right one. Eraser gets rid of objects in the background. Live filters is really nice. I mean, this is where you start to see the uh, octa-core processor in action, that we have nine filters live going at the same time and nothing seems kind of, yeah, nothing seems laggy. That's really great. So there are some great additions here. And then even if we do gesture, you can choose again, gesture, touch shot, or smile shot.
So in makeup mode, you can see all the different options for makeup that I can wear. Adding fake eyelashes, changing my lip color. There's natural. So you can see that it's um, kind of polishing my skin tone a little bit, adding obviously different colors of lipstick, different colors of eyeshadow. A little bit, that's gorgeous. <laughs> so this is beauty mode. Here's a normal shot of my face. And here's a beauty shot of my face. So you can see that they've kind of thinned it out a little bit. They've polished it and they've whitened the irises, but it's kind of like a bad Photoshop job when you look very closely. Now, one of the things that we've noticed with indoor shooting is that since there's no option to white balance, my skin tones are actually very green. Outdoor, the camera shots look very good. So all we have is a single mono speaker. It's not very loud, but at least it's very clear. Now let's try it on the Z2. You can see that we have the two front facing speakers. Just how much more full the sound sounds. So let's just hear that again for comparison. It's a little more tinny. It definitely doesn't fill the room. <laughs> but I mean, it'll get the job done. It's just also when you hold it in your hand, it, it'll probably end up muffling the sound a little bit. So when it comes to battery life in the back end, if we check out battery, you can actually control whether or not the CPU gets overclocked. So battery, and then CPU power saving mode. But what's also interesting is there is a power manager down here. So you can do power settings, or there's a nighttime mode, so it turns everything off when it's at night. You can also do an additional power saving settings, so you can control exactly what gets turned on and off. And then here in power consume, you can see what has been using what types of, uh, what percentage of power, which is good if you're running something often, then you can know which applications are eating most of your battery life. When it comes to software, we're running Android 4.2, so Jelly Beans. So it's definitely not the latest version, but the Amigo UI they've placed on top of it has some really great add-ons. Like here on the lock screen, if we move over, we can go camera, voice record, uh, we can turn the LED flash in the back to a flashlight, or we can even make a fake call. <laughs> but right now we're just gonna go directly up into the UI. So you can see that it doesn't have the app menu like traditional Android. So it's a setup a little bit more like iOS, I guess. But we have the option to um, switch around a lot of different browser features. So if we want to, ooh, let's put, Actually, so maybe let's choose maps to put down into here. But it does have a maximum of, I think it's five. Yeah, it's five. And then after that, you have to just make do with five. So let's head back. If we go down into the notification bar, into the settings, we have a quick launch menu. If we hit more, we can organize the preference as well. Uh, one of the things about the software that I do dislike is this kind of bounce feature to let you know that it's at the end. I don't feel that it's a CPU issue that the software can't handle this. I think it's just that they've just done a crap job at the animation. So you can see that it's kind of jittery there. But regardless, apart from that, the UI is, is very quick. You can see that. And then what's especially shocking about the quickness of this software is how they've done on the camera. So I mean, just take a look at this. The Vibe Z might be a smidgen quicker, but this is also very quick. If we keep going into the settings, you can see that there's a lot of quite cool stuff. So we can do all settings here. We have Bluetooth, it's Bluetooth 4.0. We have suspend button, 
So this is also kind of like iOS where you can choose what features you'd like launching in there. Let's get rid of that. Security. So you can do slide, password. Let's see, there's even a guest mode. If we keep on going down, we have battery life, where we have a CPU mode. You can do schedule on and off or schedule uh, airplane mode, which is quite great. And then we have smart gestures. So you can do smart dial, smart answers. So you just pick up the phone automatically. So there's, there's some pretty decent stuff in here when it comes to software. Now they have preloaded a bunch of things like Amigo Paper, which is a kind of background and skinning area. So you can see that there is a fairly large selection of wallpapers for you to choose from. If we head back to the main menu, there's Charm Cam, which we will go over or have gone over in the camera section. So even though the camera app is a little bit light, you can do makeup, face beauty, all these other really cool th features that, you know, it's really nice to see in the addition of software. They have a file explorer. If we head over into tools, we have a sound recorder, compass, clock, calculator, all things you hope for. But what's interesting is that they have a cam card. They come with TouchPal preloaded, WeChat's preloaded, WhatsApp's also preloaded, Kingston Office. And this is for uh, the CarmCat cam card. <laughs> uh, actually allows you to take pictures of business cards in order to organize your contacts. Uh, these are becoming a lot more popular in Asia for uh, preloads on phones. Now if we go into the power manager, you can actually customize some of the additional power settings. So there's even things like traffic assistant for, for driving. Yeah, we have no SIM card in there, I know. And just to look at how you manage your open applications, it's like this. You actually get full screens where you just kind of check out what's going on. MediaTek OctaCore processor, 2 gigabytes of RAM, 1080p display, 5.5 millimeters thin. I mean, like if we had a checklist of things that are awesome, we could just keep going. The only things that are missing for me are a micro SD card slot for expansion because on the 16 gigabyte version, you're only going to get 11 gigabytes of usable. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. At 5.55 millimeters thin, it's hard to believe that this phone isn't too thin. I thought that maybe I might sit on it and crush it, that it wouldn't feel so solid in my hand, but Gianni's, Gianni's done a fantastic job of making it feel very premium and keeping it really thin. I just wish that it maybe had a larger battery, but apart from that, there's only one thing that I do not like is that the camera sticks out just a little bit so that when it's on the table, it's just a little off balance. It's not such a big deal, but design-wise, it is kind of like a sore thumb sticking out. So we have a 5-inch 1080p display, so that means we're going to have a really nice and crisp pixel density. The only thing that was a little unfortunate was when we were outside, it wasn't that bright. I could have used a couple more nits of brightness, especially because when using your phone outdoors, well, that's a lot of the time for me. I love that they have a 5 megapixel selfie camera on the front that is a little wide angle even, so when you're trying to get shots of you and your friends, it's going to be really easy. We have a 13 megapixel shooter on the back. One thing that I do have to warn you of is that the colors were very accurate when we were shooting outside, but when we got indoors, I was kind of green, right? So there seemed to be kind of a green hue on things. Even though the color was crisp and clear, or the images were crisp and clear, I thought 13 megapixels, they've done a really good job with the software optimization for that, apart from the white balance, which there isn't that setting either. There's a lot of interesting features that came with the Geoni eLife S5.5 as well. Uh, on the selfie mode uh, and on the rear-facing camera, which, what was it called? Cam Charm. <laughs> it's kind of a weird name, but it has lots of cool features like uh, makeup and beautify and, uh, you know, removing objects in the background. And these are all things that we expect from a flagship phone, so I'm happy to report that they are all in here. One thing that I do want to caution you about, I did mention that the display isn't that bright when you're outside, and the menu in the camera is black, and the font is rather thin, so if you're trying to 
use it in direct sunlight and change and like really kind of customize your photos, it's a little hard to do. We have a single speaker that's not too loud, but the upside is it's very clear. Performance-wise, we are on par with what we're seeing in other mid-range smartphones. I mean, the octa-core MediaTek processor is delivering exactly what we expect. The only thing that I have to be a little disappointed in is the Amigo UI. I found it a little bit laggy. Uh, when I put on uh, the Nova Launcher, I found that it was a lot smoother. So it seems that it's not necessarily the performance of the device, but I think it's the software iteration of Amigo that's causing the problem. With a phone this thin, you have to wonder about battery life. That was my main concern. And if you are a heavy user, you're going to need to carry around an external battery pack. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But if you are a light to moderate user, you will get through the day. If you're going to go out at night, I would recommend having a little top up before you do. Uh, it also very much heats up. Uh, the battery on the back when you're charging it or you're using the camera a lot or if you're doing any kind of gaming, uh, because it's so thin, they haven't really been able to optimize uh, the, heat, the heat dissipation. So at really high temperatures, battery will actually start to uh, degrade a lot faster. So that's something else to consider that if you're going to be using your phone for anything intensive for a long period of time like camera, or maybe like web browsing. So if it's probably better for you for you to own this phone if you are a user who enjoys surfing in about five five minute bursts. If you're like 15 to 20 minute bursts, you're gonna to start to heat the phone and then your battery life's gonna drop significantly. So then you won't get all day. So that's definitely something to consider if you are looking at, looking at picking up this phone. It's definitely a drawback that we're not running KitKat 4.4 and we're on Jelly Bean 4.2. But there are a lot of useful bloatware additions that I almost wouldn't call bloatware and some just great software. We have a business card cataloger. We have WeChat. We have WhatsApp. So there's some really cool things that they have included. And I like that, and I usually don't like that, I, uh, UIs are iOS inspired, but in this case, it kind of has a little bit of like an Asian kitsch to it, which makes it unique to me when you look at flagship phones on the market. At 350 US dollars, depending on your market, this is a very aggressively priced phone, considering how thin it is, how good the build quality is, and just how attractive overall the device is. This has to be the best looking mid-range smartphone on the market to the point where it can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with all the flagship devices and still hold its own. I have to admit, I was skeptical that a phone this thin could feel this good, but it is fantastic. The build quality is flagship with all the top tiers. The design is best in class. It can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any of the flagship devices and probably take them out. I mean, the S5 has nothing on the build on this. The aluminum border is just stunning. The only downside to me would be they could fix the white balance and a software update to the camera. So this is early days on the phone, so you may see that roll out in the future. So that's a fixable one, but they do need to correct the white balance. Other than that, it's fast. It's this, the, the flesh tones look pretty good. Well, the texture of the flesh tones look really good, <laughs> a little bit green. The outdoor shots were quite good. Uh, the only thing is, I wish it had a bigger battery, but you can't have a bigger battery in a phone this thin. That's just the trade-off that you have to make. So overall, I do quite like this phone if you are in the market for a mid-range device that is incredibly stylish. So I'm Nicole Scott for Mobile Geeks. If you liked this review, please give us a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, Leave them in the comments below because I am prone to answer them. Yeah.